Today in this video, we are going to talk about what are the GT questions that you will be asked if you are interested in joining a certain university here in Australia. I recommend you to watch this video till the end because it's going to be super informative. Without any further ado, let's get started. Now you all must be knowing that this is the intake time, right? June, July, August, wherein most of the international students will start applying um, to the universities here and they would move from foreign countries to here in Australia in order to pursue their further education. So once you start applying for these universities, there would be certain calls that you get from these universities as a form of GTE interview. Now GTE is nothing but genuine temporary entrant. Australian government always considers GT entrants to enter the country and pursue their higher education. If you are not a GT entrant, which is genuine temporary entrant, there would be high chances for your visa refusal. Some of the times, if you go ahead and talk to someone um, who have applied for student visa and have got their visas refused, um, there would be reasons mentioned that um, the genuine temporary um, entry requirements were not fulfilled. So these are some of the things that Australian government considers it as really a deciding factor to provide visa to that particular candidate or no. Now, first and foremost, you must be knowing that these GTE calls will be made by the universities to understand um, if the student knows all the details and the student is aware of what process he will be going through or which university he has picked, which course he has picked. Are they having enough clarity about what they are doing further? So these calls most of the times would be phone calls, but sometimes it can be a video call as well it can be a zoom meeting it can be teams meeting you will be informed prior if it is a video call um, but otherwise if it is a phone call you will get a call to your phone and you just have to talk and give your interview when I applied for Latrobe University, I did get this call and it was about a 30 to 40 minute call wherein all the questions were asked in detail when I was supposed to answer them in a detailed manner as well. So the first set of questions immediately once you receive the call, uh, you will provide the salutations, hi, how are you and all of that. And once that is done, the first set of questions would be, they would be asking your personal details. For example, your name, where are you from, um, which city are you from and um, which university have you applied and all of that. Now it is really important for you to check um, the details from your passport and give your details as per your passport itself. I'm not sure to what extent that would affect if you if you miss out your middle name or anything of that sort but um, to be on the safest side I always um, had my passport right in front of me. If anyone asked my name I made sure that I gave my full name first name plus last Name. I know some of the students also do have middle names so please make sure how that's printed on your passport and how you are utilizing that name and how you are giving out that name to the university to the embassy to the immigration department later now some of the details that they might ask would be your full name your personal address and um, also your passport number these are some of the details that they ask in order to verify you as a student are you the right one who is talking on the phones because um, when 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 I was applying to the university, I had a lot of them say um, there were certain scams going on wherein the student is unable to communicate um, well in English. Um, so someone else is talking on the behalf of student without informing the authorities. So that is something which is um, straight away not legal right so in order to verify the details um, these are some of the first set of questions that you will be asked secondly they would ask your choice of country as in why did you choose Australia um, when you had the options of Canada USA UK um, and any other countries so it is important for you to say why have you chosen Australia and you you have to be really mindful when you're answering these questions you should not some of the agents some of the education agents back in um, India because I'm from India I know the scenario there so some of them just give you a set of answers that you have to prepare and then you just blur it out when someone gives you a call but um, I suggest you not to do so give them genuine reasons and when you when you are talking to them it shouldn't be as if you're reading something and as if you've prepared something right for me for example I never ever was interested in USA I've not even applied for that country I've not even started the process 
all the time i was pretty much sure about australia and one of the disadvantages that i always considered for canada was its weather it's it's something that i cannot deal with so that is why i wasn't um hell bent on canada itself so i gave the the officer um certain reasons certain practical reasons why certain countries were not uh, on my radar and why australia was always my first choice the next set of questions would be about your background such as your academic background your family background and your uh, maybe um, you know where have you lived uh, have you have you um, traveled anywhere internationally or have you lived um, internationally anywhere before and all of that now it is really important for you to be mindful when you're answering these questions because sometimes they will have all the details in fact most of the time so if there is any uh, conflict of information then you might be flagged so for example if you if they're asking about your family background it is important for you to mention all of your siblings information uh, where are they living because that's one of the questions that i was asked um so because i've got my sister they they've asked me uh, if my sister lives in australia or any other country apart from india uh, some of the cases what happens is you will have have uh, siblings here in australia right so um they would like to get that information because that that might uh, be one of the most important piece of information that they want another question uh, would be about your academic background now for example immediately after finishing my bachelor's i moved here to australia to pursue my masters but some of them um do have their work experience uh, will be working um back in their home countries for about um 2 to 3 years and then they would like to pursue higher education right so that sort of academic background and work background will be questioned and you should be able to answer if you have any work history previous work history you should be able to answer which company have you worked during what timeline have you worked when did you finish your bachelor's in how many months you were able to um uh, get that job and then how many years or months have you worked there if you have moved when did you move and all of that information is quite important uh, so please be mindful about the dates when you talk to the officer and if they are asking then yeah just go ahead and answer now once once that sort of background information is asked then they will go ahead and start asking questions about your choices now firstly they would ask about the country which we have already discussed secondly what they would ask is your choice of course For example, I've chosen Masters of Information and Communication Technology. So, um she was asking me how this course was related to my course that I pursued back in bachelor's. So, you should be able to answer those questions genuinely. Now, if you are someone who is genuinely interested in what you're studying here in Australia, you should have checked the curriculum, you should have uh, understood what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, what are they going to teach um in that particular course. Now, for example, um they did ask me why did i choose this course and why not masters in data science or masters in software engineering and all of that so one of the things that i mentioned was um when i checked the curriculum um on the letter website i understood there's no much of a uh, coding involved in this particular course and because my bachelor's is also having a um, background in networking uh, this particular course aligns really well with what i've studied back in bachelor's so i was able to relate this kind of information and talk to her uh, genuinely about my course choice the reason why they ask this is lot of students uh, just because one particular course is in the sol list and you know just because agents also sometimes um sell you courses that way this particular course is in the sol list so you'll be able to get your pr straight away so go ahead and take this course you know this is how sometimes it goes so um the authorities would like to know if you are very much aware of what you're jumping into and what you're going to study or pursue for the next 2 years that is also one of the reasons why when i get lot of messages asking sir any how is this particular course um will this course give me pr that is not something really important at that point in time because um when you when you don't do your personal research you will not be able to answer such questions if authorities are asking you and you don't know what time they're going to turn up and give you a call and ask you certain questions right and another thing which i also want to point out is if your course is in the sol list now that is in 2023 
by the time you finish your masters and by the time you finish your temporary work visa conditions that is your tr visa it'll be about two plus years which means the rules keep changing so not sure after two years if that course is still going to be in that SOL list. So this is something which I always keep emphasizing um, when most of you message me. Okay, now back to the topic. The next question they might ask you um, based on your choices is why certain university? Now, um, I'm not sure if you are a new follower on my channel. Um, I've, I've received offer letters from Swinburne, uh, Central Queensland, which is CQU and then Latrobe. So out of this, my choice was Latrobe. So um, the authorities, when they called me up, um, they asked me about why did I choose Latrobe over uh, any other university, especially deemed universities like like um, University of Melbourne, RMIT University, Deakin University, Monash University, there are a lot of options, right? So I was able to provide a really good explanation because um, coding was not my forte. Um, when I checked the course curriculum and compared course curriculum out of um, all these universities, a couple of universities that were shortlisted by myself, I, I felt the course curriculum provided by Latrobe suits my strengths and what I have studied back in bachelor's, which is why uh, that was my first choice. So you should be able to explain why you are choosing that particular university city right because there are plenty of universities um, never mind if you're choosing Melbourne as your city or Sydney as your city or any other place but you should be able to choose and you should be able to answer why you have chosen that particular university Another set of questions that um, I, I found that they would be asking is they will ask, have you done enough research on any other country or any other universities and all of that? So um, for me, uh, specifically when they asked me this question, then I accepted and said that, yes, um, there were other universities offering such courses as well. But um, as compared to the course curriculum, um, the location, the tuition fee and um, the whole um, research that I've done talking to people talking to friends and um, you know um, current existing students I found this particular university to be better and all of that so you should be able to justify your choices and you should be able to tell them that you have done your research and you're not just blindly in this process the primary purpose of these questions is they would like to know that if student is genuinely interested in pursuing this particular education or if it's just the agent who is who is just blindly pushing the student um, in this particular course and then getting their commission cut and um, also um, for their PR and you know there's, there's a lot that happens. So it is important for you to emphasize that you have done your research. How did you do? Um, what is different from your choices and the choices that you haven't made and so on and so forth. The final side of questions will be all about your financials, which means they would ask who will be funding your course, uh, what sort of financial background you come from, uh, what your parents do and all of that. So you should be able to tell them that um, you are doing financially great this is what my parents do this is how they would be supporting my education if they are supporting your education um, and if you're going to go ahead and take any education loan that's what something you have to um, you know be aware of and be mindful of as well some of the pointers that I would like to mention here would be if you don't understand the questions that they are asking politely ask them to repeat so instead of answering something that's incorrect. Um, if you don't understand, just ask them, could you please repeat this question and go ahead and um, understand and then answer because that's the best way to go forward. Secondly, be confident in your answers. If they understand that you are hesitating or if you are stumbling upon your words and unable to answer, that's, that's a red flag for them. And do not lie. Please don't lie um, during these interviews because it is important. Um, these interviews, sometimes uh, they become make or break as deciding factors. So please be careful about it. I hope this video was quite informative. Go ahead and share this video to all the ones who are planning to come to Australia. If you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye.